Many years ago, I was painting portraits. I've always been interested in portraiture. Many years ago, I was painting them in a more conventional way with paint. Um, and uh, this is um, long ago enough where uh, it was before social media was a big thing. So you probably can't find any of it on the internet, thankfully. Um, but uh, I stopped. I, w I was trying to get somewhere with the paintings and uh, um, was a bit frustrated with them, so I actually stopped making paintings for a bit um, and then just started, you know, I usually kept a notebook and so I'd write notes in the book about things I was reading or listening to um, and then eventually uh, started to um, make little portrait sketches in in those books. And at one point, the uh, a sketch that I made overlapped with some notes that I made. And um, it was in that moment where I sort of realized that the quality of the written line is no different than the quality of the drawn line, except with the written line, we've assigned meaning to a sequence of marks. And so it really started out initially as an exercise to see if I could render a portrait um, with by writing text so that every mark of the portrait has meaning that we've assigned um, or that operates in a, in a specific way. Um, and then I made this. So this is the very first text drawing um, that I did in my little moleskin um, notebook. And when I made it, so my mind sort of flooded with ideas around um, the ways I think that we're inseparable, who we are is inseparable from the ideas that we've absorbed through language. Um, so, um, yeah, I was curious if I could make portraits in this way um, and that the accumulation of text on the page would be a metaphor for the ways that we embody language or the language that we use. Um, I realized that I was mostly interested in language, as much interested in language as I was with making portraits. So this was a way for me to bring the two things together. And it was really thinking about the ways language carves out categories and identities like race and gender, gender and structures our lives and the way we interact. <laughs> artists fit different lanes or carve out their own lanes. So I'm trying to carve out my own lane so that it's distinctive and authentic to who I am and what I think I have to say and offer. But it's all up for grabs. <laughs> this is Kentura's first museum exhibition and it surveys recent works produced in the past three years. She works in different mediums and explores materials and processes with an incredible curiosity. I make these text drawings and they're really about thinking about how we use language, about the limits in language, describing our day-to-day -day experiences. It's been interesting to first make these photographs that are intentionally blurry and use these texts that are quite poetic and open-ended. She uses letter rubber stamps and ink to literally make marks and stamps and saturate the forms and shapes of a human figure. On top of that, she uses different techniques of embossing and debossing the paper, sort of like pushing in or out the paper to give some shapes and shadows. Or she writes with dry pen different texts that go from personal narratives to sort of like string theory and astrophysics. I feel like the drawings are like slow drawings. You experience it one way from afar and when you get close up you might be able to make out that there's text and that the drawing is in fact just like a series of text. 
I hope that the work slows down how you draw conclusions about what you're seeing, that we don't lead to conclusions so quickly. This show helps slow everyone down. I think that's a real success for me. The vision for the project grew out of this idea of encountering strangers. Saunders is, is a word that essentially means taking this moment of realizing other people around you and imagining what their lives might be like. It just seemed like a perfect fit to describe a sort of ideal um, experience that one could have on a train station. The day that I photographed the models was a really special experience. We did an open call to the public where anybody who associated themselves with Inglewood, whether they currently live there or work there or grew up there or had some sort of strong tie to that community and basically allowed anyone to come. I allowed them to behave however they wanted to behave, whether they spoke with other people, whether they stood off by their own. And I just tried to capture a very sort of real moment of people living their lives and noticing other people around them, which is, you know, the essence of the meaning of the word sonder. I think the idea of acknowledging that somebody's life is as significant as your own is a great experience and a great moment to have in your day-to-day -day life. The way we engage with people, you know, when we first see or meet someone, we perceive the most superficial qualities. So there's always some interior that we may never have access to. And so I like making these drawings and objects where there are layers. Um, some are very legible and then other aspects are not. My name is Kintura Davis and I am a visual artist. So my work mostly consists of drawings right now. Um, some objects, but the objects sort of extend from the drawings. Essentially, the drawings kind of embody an interest I have um, in thinking about our relationship with language. The phrases that I use are quite poetic. Um, some extend from texts that I've been reading. Some of it is my own writing, and um, I pair the phrase with photographs that I've taken and then I basically translate the photographic information using rubber letter stamps, dipping that in black oil paint, and sort of section by section render the figure by stamping out the text. The idea of something being both compact and expansive um, the book as a form is really interesting to me because it's an object that's very portable but um, is potentially or oftentimes dense with meaning. And so for a while I've been making these sort of book drawings that can exist as a stack of paper but then expands if you put all the sheets up lined up into a large sort of immersive wall drawing. The body of text that I ended up settling on um, is the debate passing the 13th Amendment. On the surface, it does this very positive and necessary thing. But on the other hand, the 13th Amendment uh, leaves this sort of loophole to continue slavery via the prison industrial complex. I like the idea of leaving hints that there's something underneath the surface or something that you don't quite have access to because that's the nature of our interactions in general. Like if you're quite aware that you don't have full access to all the qualities of an object or all the text embedded in a drawing, then that might slow down your reading of it. and encourage you to think about how you draw conclusions about whatever you're engaging with.